So, well, here it comes. Yeah. The votes are in for the New Hampshire primary. You know who came out on top, beating Nikki Haley by about 11%. And while he reverted to his usual script in his victory speech, Haley accepted lost, the loss and claimed she's still in the running. Take a look. I want to congratulate Donald Trump on his victory tonight. He earned it. New Hampshire is first in the nation. It is not the last in the nation. This race is far from over. There are dozens of states left to go. She's doing uh, like a speech like she won. She didn't win, she lost. Who the hell was the imposter that went up on the stage before and like claimed a victory? She did very poorly, actually. You can't let people get away with okay? You can't. You just can't do that. And when I watched her in the fancy dress that probably wasn't so fancy come up, I said, what's she doing? We won. You know, that's what we all said when you lost to Biden. <laughs> and we continue to say, hey, you didn't win mm -hmm. the 2020 election, and you keep saying you did. Yeah. So <laughs> she maybe just took a... a page out of your playbook. Uh -huh. yeah. you know, but she says, she says the race is not over. Do you think there's a path anywhere? I mean, I'm not sure what she's thinking, so any thoughts about what she may be thinking is I'll a... to our resident yeah. Republican. Right. The math gets really hard for Nikki Haley, mm -hmm. but let me explain why Donald Trump was spiraling last night, even though he did win New Hampshire and proved he is the dominant force in Republican politics because Nikki Haley proved that he is radioactive in a general election. Mm -hmm. She won independence by historic margins as well as moderate Republicans. And this is a wild stat. According to a Fox News poll, 35% of New Hampshire Republicans will not support Trump under any circumstances in a general election. And that number only goes up if he's convicted of a crime, which he very well may be. Mm -hmm. So she kind of just demonstrated to the public that he has a very, he has Everest to climb to be able to win mm -hmm. a general election. But for some reason, elected Republicans are tripping on themselves to endorse him and get behind him. Yeah. Now, here is my warning. We're careening into a race that six in 10 Americans don't want, Trump versus Biden, and Biden is also having a really hard time. He cannot get through a public speech without being shouted down as genocide that, Joe by young people. You know, but that's, that's okay, but we, I need you guys to tell me why she thinks there is a path forward, because she's not, she's not removing herself. So I'm well, curious in the words of Lawrence O'Donnell, maybe he'll choke on a cheeseburger. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with continuing to fight. She was well, yeah, a two-term was... governor of South mm -hmm. Carolina. I see the math as very hard because Trump has kind of set up the primary so it favors him. Mm -hmm. Nevada, he changed the rules so that it favors him. All the Super Tuesday states are winner take all. That favors him. It's tough. I like that she's fighting because currently two people stand between Donald Trump and the White House, Nikki Haley and Joe Biden, and that is scary. Well, well, for, I, oh, for me, you know, she, does, she doesn't have a path. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can look at all the metrics you want. She does not have a path. I admire her stick to itness, but she does not have a path. Well, um, I feel like you don't really admire her stick to it. <laughs> well, I don't admire her. But I admire her stick to itness. Gotcha. I, I admire that she part. She did do. She was a governor of a state. She was an ambassador. Yeah. She's not a flake. She's not. She is a flake. I, I just don't. Anyway. Yeah. I. Um, it, my question for Republicans at this point is, let's look at the long game because she doesn't have a path. So what are you going to do, Republicans? Are you going to put this country before your party and not vote? For put your party, party before, before your country. I'm sorry, put your party before, before your country right. and not vote for Donald Trump. You see too many establishment Republicans now going right back and falling in line under this would-be dictator. And a lot of people have a lot of things to say about Anna Navarro, but you know what she did? She put her country before her party. She remained a Republican, and she started stumping for Joe Biden because she didn't want Donald Trump in the White House. Well, and I always in that category, too. Well, I, well, I'm, I'll say is. this. I'm not voting for Donald Trump, and a record number of Republicans yeah. are never voting for Donald Trump. But you Trump. have to then Joe, vote for Biden. Joe Biden needs to get out, and he needs to win progressive votes, he needs to win independent votes, and he needs to try to reach Republican votes. We're 10 months away. I'm going to listen to Joe Biden. I'm going to hear what he has to say. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if a third party emerges. I'm going to see. I'm not going to commit today to anything mm -hmm. other than I will work to defeat Donald Trump. Well, I can't believe we are here again um, as we're looking towards this Donald Trump 
being back in the public eye, but I do place it solely on the shoulders of elected Republicans in D.C. Yeah. They had a window. And it, after January 6th, they came out. McCarthy, um, uh, who else came out? Um, Sonic. Yeah, a bunch of them Even came Lindsey out. Even Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham came out. They, they flipped immediately, and that was their moment. <laughs> they knew the party was fractured. They knew they were having this populist Donald Trump MAGA wing and then the old school conservatives, and they had a moment, and they let it pass. Yeah. And now they become completely Completely, they run against him, barely hit him, and then have to be in servitude to him. Well, watching but they him, don't. Watching his well, dynamic with Vivek Ramaswamy and Tim Scott yeah, well, on that I'm stage was funny, you, like, be quiet. I'm going to show quiet. you this right now, because this is really going to irritate y'all. It's really going to irritate you. <laughs> oh, this. Tim Scott. Please show this yeah. clip. You know who delivered a double-digit victory tonight? It is a double-digit victory as of right now is this man, Donald J. Trump, the leader of America first. Did you ever think that she actually appointed you, Tim? <laughs> and think of it, appointed, and you're the senator of his state, and she endorsed me. You must really hate her. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's a shame. It's uh, a shame. Uh-oh. I just love you. No, that's... <laughs> That's why he's a great politician. It's so... Ugh. <laughs> it's so pathetic. All I can say, this is so terrible, but I thought if you get any more up this man's backside... <laughs> he's gonna come out of his mouth. All we're gonna see is Tim Scott's feet and Donald's... He's, he'll be wearing Donald Trump. I, I don't get it. 